He was really struggling to get rid of these fish. They didn't even want them for free. Believed it was gonna be a buyer's market and didn't wanna sell any fish at the auction and no one is gonna bid on anything. So the first lot of the entire night comes up and it got passed in. No one bidded, not one bid. So I jokingly said to my uncle and Adam, I'm gonna go up on stage and get my lots and we'll just go home. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be talking about the major cichlid auction that happened last week. It's the first major auction we've been able to have in Sydney for a very, very long time. And I wanted to show you guys how my fish performed at the auction. Now, because of COVID-19 in Australia, we've been very fortunate and very lucky and we've been able to have these club meetings uh, on a semi-regular basis. And I understand around the world, a lot of you guys haven't unfortunately been able to go to your clubs and um, enjoy your hobby. So I hope that sharing this video with you guys kind of makes it feel like um, you're seeing something that goes on at a club. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to film on the night, but I will discuss with you guys how each lot of fish performed, how much commission the club made on the sales of my fish, and how much cash I made on the night. So let's get into this week's video. So one of the things you need to do to prepare for the auction is to fill in your lot booklets. Now, in the major auction, you're allowed a total of maximum of 16 lots. So I have two of these booklets. On each booklet, you can fit eight lots and you can see the fish that I have for sale in the auction on this booklet. So we'll just go through it quickly. You've got your lot numbers that's predefined. You've got to enter the description of the fish. You can either use the common or the Latin name, the quantity of fish per lot, the size of the fish in each lot, so small, medium or large for the species that they are, and the reserve price you intend to sell them for. So over the page, we've got an exact copy of that that I keep. So as the auction goes, I fill in the sale price for each lot as they get sold. So I have an idea when I go to the uh, auction table at the end of the night to collect my cash, I know a rough estimate of how much I am getting back. Now bear in mind that the club takes, I believe 10% of the total sale price of all the fish that you sell on the night. So they will make some money off this. So that's one booklet. And here's the other booklet. So the fish that I'm selling. So again, it's the same thing, but with uh, the other fish. So I've got a total of 16 lots and you have, are allowed a maximum of three of the same species of fish per auction. So you can see my white, I've got three lots of white calvers, three lots of brevis sunspot, three lots of lamprologus ocellatus gold. They go over onto this page. Three lots of longfin bristlenose, three lots of my coenga golds. And the last lot is uh, some ventralis tritica fry that I'm selling and again with these I've got the copy for myself the next thing you need to do <laughs> on these is there's a third page and you have to write them out all over again so these are stickers that get stuck to the bag and this actual these stickers are pretty uh, bad at sticking to wet aquarium bags so uh, a bit of tape over the top of this over the top of these lot numbers uh, helps stick them to the bag so I've had to write Alto Lamprologus calvus <laughs> and all the other fish species names several times today. So I'm preparing this the night before. So in the morning, I don't have to worry about this. All I have to do is catch the fish and be on my way to Adam's house as soon as possible so we can make it to the auction in time, get the fish in, and then we can relax. So there is a bit of prep work involved before the auction. So auction day comes. It's 6 a.m. Saturday morning. My alarm's going off. I am dead tired still. I could sleep in for another two to three hours. I actually contemplated sleeping in for about another hour, but instead I hit the snooze for five minutes and then got up and came into the fish room. So I started bagging my 16 lots of fish. That whole process took almost three hours. Now, considering I don't have any aquascaping in the top row of tanks, and that's where most of the fish I was catching for the auction were uh, coming out of, I think it still took me a long time to catch them. Fish like the Kawanga Golds are really hard to catch for some reason. They've just got an unusual way of swimming, as well as the Neal Emperologus Brevis Sunspot. They've just got an unusual way of swimming that is kind of deceptive. And yeah, it just took me a long time to catch all the fish and bag them. Also in that process, you have to stick on a sticker on the bag, tape over that, and then also write on the bag. I didn't write on the bags the night before because sometimes I have a habit of writing too high up the bag and then getting that caught up in the crinkling of the plastic. So it would have been a waste of time. Okay guys, the bags are all packed. All the fish are in. We got some long fin bristlenose here. Here are the Lamprologus ocellatus gold, six per bag. 
Sorry, I'm really trying to do this quickly because I don't want to run out of too much time. So here's the Neo Lamp Prologus Brevis Sunspot, six in the bag, reserve of 40. And in here, my pride and joy, first time I'm selling them, Alto Lamp Prologus Calvus, white Calvus, three for 45. See them in the bag there. Look and sweet. Don't want to stress them out too much though. So that's this box. And then we've got this box here. We got Kawanga Golds, six in the bag, 30 bucks. And there's three bags of them. And we've got one bag of Ventralis Tritika, four in the bag, reserve of 40. See how they go. Never sold them before either. So in here we got three bags of Brussonos, six each, six in each bag. We've got six Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold here, so three bags of those. We got three bags of Neolamprologus Brevis Sunspot, six in each bag, and then three Alto Lamprologus Calvus uh, in each bag, and there's three bags of those. So they're on my lots. Anyway, I better get cracking and uh, get on my way to Wollongong. Out the door by about 9.30. Get to Adam's house about an hour later. My uncle arrives and we decide to leave early. That was about quarter to 11. We drive down to Wollongong and Mount Oosley is completely fogged out. Uh, we're driving down the mountain. It's basically 100 to 110 zone and we're driving in about 40 k's an hour. You can't see the cars in front of you. Hazard lights are on just as a precaution, but we eventually made it to the auction. During that trip down, my uncle was selling some Frontosa. Now for some stupid reason, I didn't get any footage of the Frontosa he was selling. They were huge, they were over a foot long, easy. And on the journey down, we discussed how he was going to sell those fish. He was really struggling to get rid of these fish. He had one fish per fish tank in his fish room, basically had them all in separate four foot tanks. He had spawned them, separated them, and then he couldn't put them back into, into the same tank ever again. They would always fight after he split them up. So he kept them in separate tanks in his fish room and it was such a waste that he couldn't use those tanks. He desperately wanted to sell them. So this was a great opportunity for him to offload those fish. He even went to a few local fish stores, asked them if they wanted to buy them off him and they didn't, want it. They didn't even want them for free, which is really unfortunate because these were beautiful front toes, are fully grown. So on the way down to the auction, we're discussing how he's gonna sell his fish. He was actually going to sell them for $25 each as individual fish in buckets. Talking to him about it, I tried to convince him to sell them as one lot. I feel that when you see one fish being sold at an auction, the, the interest is a bit lacking because it's one fish and then you probably, you're not gonna, you don't know if another Fontosa, for example, is gonna show up that you can put with that fish uh, because you don't, you don't know what's gonna come up next in the auction. We don't get a chance to see all the fish that are registered in the auction. So I always feel it's best to put them all in the one lot together. That would garner more interest, I felt. And because they're in buckets, people from the crowd have to go up and actually see the fish. And I'm telling you, they look amazing in those buckets. So I was sure it was gonna get really interesting with how those fish went. I brought down some air pumps to attach to the buckets so the fronties had oxygenated water during the entire auction. So thankfully I convinced my uncle to sell them in one lot. I asked him how, what would he be happy with? And he actually said $75 for three adult frontosa, huge fish. So we make it to the auction by about 12.30. We put our fish into the auction, we register them in, and we sit down and we can relax now because all we need to do is just wait for the auction to begin. And it started a little bit late because there were a lot of people still putting fish in and it started at around quarter to two in the afternoon. Now, I was concerned because obviously we haven't had a major auction in a very long time, over a year. Uh, there were smaller monthly auctions. We were allowed three lots of fish, no more than three lots of fish per auction per month. And because of that, I felt it was really gonna be a buyer's market. So Adam believed it was going to be a buyer's market and didn't want to sell any fish at the auction because again, he thought everyone was just going to be trying to offload their fish and no one is going to bid on anything. So the first lot of the entire night comes up. I can't remember what fish it was and it got passed in. No one bidded, not one bid. So I jokingly said to my uncle and Adam, I'm going to go up on stage and get my lots and we'll just go home. <laughs> because it just didn't look like it was gonna be a good night. The next two lots struggled to sell. They did sell, but they did really struggle to sell. And even the auctioneers said, this is gonna be a very long day. But after that, things picked up. Momentum started going, more people were bidding, more people were arriving, and it ended up being a fantastic auction. We were really surprised. It ended up being a seller's market, especially if you were selling Tanganyika and cichlids. No word of a lie, I was shocked. Normally Malawi cichlids do really well, and they do do well. Uh, however, Tanganyikans were really selling. 
So his lot of frontos had come up for the auction, get the three buckets out. So seeing buckets on stage at the auction is quite unusual because you're not allowed to sell fish in buckets at the auction. We actually got permission from the club to sell the frontoza in buckets, so it was okay in this instance. Now, when they bring the buckets up to the stage, people are getting interested to see what is in these buckets. They must be some pretty large fish. I think 30 to 40 people got up and had a look inside the buckets. So the bidding starts. Uh, the auctioneer says it's a silly reserve, $50 <laughs> for three large frontoza. Sea of hands go up and before you know it the auctions above $200 and people are still bidding on the fish So I had every intention of getting my air pumps I had two air battery powered air pumps and I wanted them back now I think it was at around the $240 mark when the auctioneer asked, are the air pumps going with the fish? And I said, yes, sell the air pumps with the fish. I didn't want to kill the momentum on the auction. I thought that was really would have been really silly of me to do. That just got interest going even further. And I think from memory, they sold for $290 for three frontoza. My uncle was grabbing me, he was so happy. He was so thrilled, so glad I told him about the auction because he didn't even actually know that it was coming up. So I was really happy for him, obviously. And it, was, it turned out to be a fantastic night. So the fish I was selling, unfortunately I left my auction papers at Adam's house, uh, but he sent me a photo of my auction papers so I can tell you guys the exact prices of everything that sold and the amount of commission the club made on each lot. So my very first lot of fish that came up on the night was my white Alto Lempologus calvus. This was the very, very first time I was selling any of my fry. These fry are over a year old now, and this was the first time I was able to sell them. So my very first bag of white Alto Lempologus calvus. I was a little nervous. I really don't want to sell these guys, honestly. Look at them, they're beautiful in the tank. I love watching this tank, but I can't keep them all. I have to sell them. I set the reserve of these guys at $45 for three fish. And they're just over an inch, maybe an inch and a half long now. And I was expecting 60, maybe $70 for three fish. So the bidding starts and it just keeps going. It makes it to $100 and I'm shocked, <laughs> completely shocked. And it ends up selling for $110. My first lot of fish of the night, so I'm thinking this is gonna be a fantastic night. The next lot of Alto Lampologus calvus sold again for $110. And the very last bag of calvus that I had for sale on the night actually sold for $90, so a little bit less. People go home later in the night and there's obviously less interest because I guess people have already bidded for calvus and they don't need another bag of them. So nine of my calvus fry sold for $310. Couldn't believe it. Now the adult pair of calvus that I bought from the auction in 2019, I bought them for $90, an adult pair. They weren't sold as a breeding pair, they were sold as an adult pair. Even if they were sold as a breeding pair, I keep telling you guys, there's no guarantee a breeding pair will breed for you in your tanks. But basically the adult pair of white Alto Lampologus calvus that I bought in November 2019, I bought them for $90. Three of their babies sold for 110. The logic, it doesn't make sense. Why would three babies sell for more than two adult parents? It was just crazy. Looking back on it in hindsight, I think I got very lucky with my white calvus pair that I bought. Yeah, I was extremely happy they did so well. Neolamprologus oscillatus gold. Usually when I sell them at the auction, I sell them in four fish in a bag. This time I decided to sell six at a time just to see how they'd go. Think if you get more fish in the lot, it garners more interest. And I've got heaps of them. It's got one lot here sold for $85. Another lot sold for $85. And one of the other lots sold for 80. So not much difference there. Pretty much bang on for each lot. I'm extremely happy with that. In the past, I have sold four Lamprologus oscillatus gold and barely getting 40 to $45 for the, for the bag with four of them in it. So again, this night, this auction was really good for Tanganyika and cichlids. Next fish I'll talk about was my common colored long fin bristlenose. Last time I sold them in an auction, six of them sold for $75. Couldn't believe it. They were the best fish I sold on that night. This time, however, they struggled to sell. Not just my bristlenose, all bristlenose struggled to sell on the night. I had the reserves for each lot of bristlenose catfish set at $50. The first lot actually sold $10 dollars under reserve I just let it go I just didn't want to bring fish back home so first lot of six long fin common color bristlenose sold for $40 I was a little bit disappointed in that the next lot sold for $46 so $4 under reserve I expected to see at least 60 bucks from these guys about $10 a fish but they weren't doing well and one of the weird things was that one of the very last bags on the night happened to be my long fin normal color bristlenose bag the last bag I had for sale and it sold the most uh, compared to the other two bags that sold for $70 it went $20 over reserve you can't predict this stuff it's just so random don't understand why that happened so I was happy with that obviously 
Uh, I sold one lot of Ventralis Chitika, uh, some fry from the second batch. They were all born together. The reserve was $40. They sold for $48, so I didn't make much money on those. And there were quite a few of those going through as well. Uh, the next lot of fish, my Brevis Sunspot. I had six in the bag again, like the Lamprologus Ocellatus Gold. Decided to sell six. I've got heaps of them. One of the lots sold for $60, and the other two lots sold for $65. Now, the Kawanga Golds, I decided to sell some Malawi cichlids. They're the only Malawi cichlids I have in the entire fish room, and they did quite well for me, I thought. So, again, the bidding, I started the reserve at $40 for six. Uh, the first lot sold for $46, and the next lot sold for $60. Now, there was an issue with one of my lots. They got handed in to the desk and when I walked up to see what was wrong with that lot two of the fish in the bag looked like they were about to die like they were going to they were on their way out so I just took the fish back home and they're all fine none of them died I think they just got maybe a little bit colder it was a cooler day than usual for a February night and I think that may have played a role in how they looked in the bag but they were completely fine and still are I haven't lost any of them so out of all the fish that I sold of the night, the total amount of money that the lots made was $1,065. I just could not believe it. However, the club does take a portion of that with the commission and they got $106.50 from that amount, which meant that I took home $958.50 unbelievable guys I really did not expect that amount I was telling people I thought I'd be very happy with at least $500 from all the fish uh, to almost double that is just amazing so it's a great feeling it's very rewarding and I hope you guys once COVID ends wherever you are in the world you'll be able to have a similar experience and enjoy selling fish once again getting some normality in the world and enjoying your hobby uh, again, we've been extremely lucky in Australia being able to do this on a semi-regular basis and I hope you guys can do it again soon. And it was really nice to see that the Tanganyika cichlids were selling so well. I sometimes do get a little concerned that no one really wants Tanganyika cichlids, that in the hobby everyone wants the colourful fish, you know, the Malawis and the South Americans. But it was really comforting to see that there was a lot of interest on the night with the Tanganyika cichlids. If you're wondering, did I buy any fish? I bidded on one lot of fish out of over 600 lots and those fish were gold-headed compressor seps, Tanganyika and cichlid, similar to the calvus, but the compressor seps. I did see them get logged into the auction, so they, I knew they were coming up, and I was waiting all night for them. And then once my fish was selling, I had some confidence that I should go for these comps. So they were sold as an adult breeding pair. So the male was that big, no joke. He was massive, way bigger than my uh, breeding pair male, and the female was about the size of my, my male white calvus. She was huge as well. So large adult breeding pair. Now, considering I purchased my breeding pair, which was sold as an adult pair again, of white calvus for $90 in November 2019, I was kind of hoping they'd go for a similar price. But considering how this particular auction was going on the night, and a lot of people were really interested in Tanganyika and cichlids, I had a feeling this was going to exceed the $150 mark for this pair. And I was prepared to pay that. I think the bidding started at $80 or $70. And I just held my hand up the entire time. So the auction is progressing. The auctioneer is getting all the bids and my hand just stays up. And it gets to $160 and I realize my hand is still up in the air and I have the bid. So, so <laughs> I really didn't expect my hand to start that, that long. It was almost like I wasn't listening to what was happening with the progress of the auction. So I slowly took my hand down. I had what was the leading bid thinking I may have this. And the auctioneer goes, going once, He's about to say going twice and then someone bids again, $170. I didn't put my hand up again. <laughs> the fish sold for, I think, $200. I think they made it to $200. If they didn't, they sold for $190, definitely. Couldn't believe they sold for that much. There was a lot of clapping, a lot of applause. Uh, I should say there was an applause for my uh, uncle's fish. My, his front he's selling as well. But yeah, $190 to $200 for those fish. Uh, they look like a beautiful pair. The only concern I did have with that pair was they were very large which meant they were also old to be that size. Calvus and compressor seps have a lifespan of around eight to 10 years. Be that big in captivity means they are pretty old. So I kind of thought that maybe the owner of those fish had well and truly bred them out and they weren't breeding for him anymore or weren't breeding anywhere as well as they used to and he decided to part with them. So I kind of feel it was maybe a blessing that I didn't get them because that is a lot of money to spend on two fish. I've never spent that amount of money on fish ever. But hopefully that winning bidder will be able to breed those fish and put their fry through the club. And then maybe I'll get another opportunity to buy those fish. 
But yeah, there you go, guys. That's how the club went that night. It was a really fantastic night for us. My uncle went home happy. I went home happy. And Adam actually bought some fish as well. He bought some Zeno tilapia sand sifters. And here they are now. He bought two lots of four. So he's got eight of these guys in his aquarium right now. And they look amazing. Apparently, they behave kind of like a dog. And uh, when they see you, they'll come up to the front of the tank and just follow you around the tank and uh, almost eat out of your hand. But as you can see, these guys well and truly are still fry. But hopefully one day Adam will breed them and then he'll give me some of their fry. <laughs> so there you have it guys, how my fish performed at the major cichlid auction. I really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.